Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Jessica Friedman and I am the chair and founder of Med and its Medical Admissions. I am also an emergency physician and a former faculty member and medical school admissions com committee member at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Today I'm going to be talking about the UChicago Pritzker 2025-2026 secondary essay prompts. We will go through them one by one and I will offer guidance on how you should be thinking about these secondary essay prompts and how to answer them. So prompt number one, students at the Pritzker School of Medicine complete the majority of their clinical training at UChicago Medicine, UCM, nationally recognized by the AMC for sustained commitment to community engagement, partnership, and collaboration has a primary service area where poverty is over double the state level. Additionally, our students lead numerous community-based initiatives throughout Chicago, including six free clinics that primarily served uninsured patients. Please share with us the personal and professional experiences that have best prepared you to work in this clinical environment and that um, the limit for that essay is 450 words. So when you read secondary essay prompts like this one, they tell you a lot about the values and the mission of the medical school. Having done rotations myself at the University of Chicago, I can tell you that yes, it is in a very impoverished area um, and it serves an underserved community. So when you're reading his prompts, these are, this is telling you that Pritzker is committed to an underserved community and they want to know that that service model is something that is also important to you, that you already have evidence for offering service to communities in need. And so immediately what that should tell you is if you have absolutely no experience working with underserved communities, it's going to be tough to show Pritzker, to convince Pritzker that you are committed to working in one of those six free clinics that serve uninsured patients, okay? So as you're reading these prompts, you want to kind of read through them to identify what values are going to be most important to the institution. What are they going to be looking for in your background? So as you're answering this question in 450 words, you want to write about all of those experiences, whether those are personal experiences, hopefully professional experiences that have prepared you to work in this type of clinical setting. Now, the most obvious uh, you know, experience that is going to come to mind is if you yourself have had some clinical experience working with underserved populations. It is fine if you don't have that. Do you have any tutoring experience, for example, tutoring underserved students? Do you have any experience working with the homeless? Do you have any experience, um, you know, with outreach with, um, you know, any work with addicts or the homeless population or any poor populations in general? Now, many students do not have clinical work experience when they apply to medical school. So if you don't have that, don't worry about it but you want to be able to identify what experiences you have working with patients or people rather from, from circumstances where they experienced poverty or they didn't have access to maybe education or they didn't have access to healthcare. Um, and you want to identify those experiences and how that has prepared you for this patient population. Now, if you have any personal experiences, maybe you grew up in an area that was underserved, or maybe you have a family member whom you visited often who was growing up in an area that was underserved where they didn't have access to healthcare, maybe in a rural area, or maybe even in another country, perhaps your grandparents live elsewhere and they did not have access to healthcare. So you can weave in both your personal experiences related to you know, understanding underserved populations, or you can work in your professional or your extracurricular experiences that are related to working with underserved populations. Okay, question number two. All MD students participate in our Longitudinal Scholarship and Discovery Research Program, which offers protected curricular time, mentoring, and funding for students to pursue their scholarly interests. 
Please describe your research interests and share how our research opportunities will help you advance your career goals. 450 words. Okay, what does this tell you? This tells you that research and scholarly experiences are really important to Pritzker. So if you don't have research experience, that too is going to tell you something. Doesn't mean you shouldn't complete the secondary essay, but it's clear that research is important to Pritzker. So what we recommend you do in this essay is first you want to explain what are your research interests. Those research interests ideally should be based on experiences that you've already had. What are those interests that are already established through your scholarly work? That could be in the classroom, that could be in the lab, but what interests have you already demonstrated and how are you going to take advantage of the opportunities that exist at Pritzker to further those interests? Maybe you have a new interest, something you've just discovered. What experience have you had that has piqued your curiosity about a different research discipline or another topic or something else that you want to pursue at Pritzker? In this question, you can even identify a specific project or a specific researcher whom you'd want to get involved with at Pritzker. That shows a depth of interest. It shows you've done your homework and it shows that you have a really targeted curiosity. Then you want to, don't forget to address the last part of the prompts, right? How will this help you advance your career goals? Do you want to be a researcher? Are you somebody who hopes to practice evidence-based medicine as you're caring for patients? Do you want to practice in the community, but do you hope to be able to read the literature and be able to analyze the literature and think about it critically? So you want to make sure in this essay that you address all parts of the prompt. Okay, essay number three. Medical education requires humility and resilience as students learn to become physicians, prepared to deliver exceptional care within a rapidly changing and sometimes challenging healthcare landscape. Ch share with us a difficult or challenging situation you have encountered and how you dealt with it. In your response, identify both the coping skills you called upon to resolve the situation and the support people or person persons from whom you sought advice. Okay, this is a great question. It's about a challenging situation. Now be careful, this isn't about a dilemma. They specifically ask you about a difficult or challenging situation. They don't tell you in what setting that, that challenging situation needed to take place. So this is something that could potentially be from your personal life. It could be from your academic life. It could be from a work experience. It could be from any part of your life. We see students actually write really powerful essays um, when they're answering prompts like this, and this prompt in particular, when they write about something from their personal life. The key here is they want to understand how you deal with challenging situations because as a physician, as an MD-PhD, you on a daily basis are going to be encountering challenging situations. They want to understand how you utilize resources, how you cope, how you think through situations, and they want to know who you rely upon for, for that support and who you get advice from. So as you're answering this question, you want to think about what do they want to know from you? They want to know how you cope. They want to know what your coping skills are, and they want to know how you resolve the situation. How did those coping skills allow you to resolve the situation? And who did you go to for help? What did you ask from those people? What did you need from those people to help you through this situation? So the key thing with this question is to keep in mind this can be from any sphere of your life. It doesn't need to be from a clinical experience. It doesn't need to be from a research experience. This can be something you encountered within your own family or maybe at school or maybe as you were working um, as an RA or as a teaching assistant. So this can be from literally any, p any part of your life. Okay, additional questions. Please feel free to use this space to convey any additional information that you may might wish the committee to know. For example, if you are not currently completing a degree, please share your planned or current activities for the application cycle. We suggest that you limit 
your text to about 300 words. So for this question, an additional question, first of all, additional questions are not required to be answered. And don't feel that you need to fill the space just to fill the space. Please don't do that. It makes admissions committees nuts. Um, I think for this question, if you wanted, even if you've documented what you're doing potentially during a gap year in your application, in your primary application, I would I would probably list that again just for completeness because they sort of ask you to do that. Um, and otherwise, for most students, they are not going to be answering this question. Now, let's say there's something that developed since you submitted your primary application. Maybe you solidified what your gap year experience is going to be. Maybe you had another achievement since submitting your application. This is where you would include that information potentially, um, but don't feel that you need to actually max out the space on this one. This should, this should be a very quick answer. Okay, number two. If your school has a pre-medical committee or pre-medical advisor who composes a letter for each applicant from your school and you chose not to avail yourself of this service, please provide an explanation in the text below for your decision not to do so. We suggest you limit your, um, your, your answer to 200 words. Okay, so if you had a pre-med committee and you did not get a pre-med committee letter, um, or you had a pre-med advisor and you did not utilize your pre-med advisor, um, they want to know why, and you should have a good explanation. Now, in terms of you know having a pre-med advisor whom you didn't avail yourself of them, um, I'm not sure how they would potentially know how much you went to your pre-med advisor or not. Um, but if you don't have a pre-med committee letter and your school offers one, that certainly needs an explanation, undoubtedly. For some students, if they graduated several years ago and their school had a pre-med committee letter um, and they don't have one, that's a pretty simple and straightforward explanation. And that is an acceptable reason not to have a pre-med committee letter when your school offers one. Um, so with this question as well, be very straightforward, don't make excuses. And, you know, just say it the way it is. That, that's generally how you should approach questions of this nature. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck on your Pritzker secondary essays and on your medical school admissions process. Bye-bye.